Awesome. Should we should we start? Yeah, I'm ready when you are. Go for okay, it. Okay, great. So, um, Katie O'Brien, you're originally from Australia, is that right? Correct. Yes, the sunny yeah. Gold Coast. Wonderful. And uh, you've been living in Japan how long? Three and a half years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And it was great to be able to connect with you because you were featured by Asahi News. On that. I know, which was which was wonderful. Did you end up seeing that on? Did you see that online or did you see that on TV? I think I saw it online. I okay. never. I, yeah. I don't watch Japanese TV, to be honest. <laughs> yes, we we have a TV, but we don't have a Japanese TV subscription. So the the content or the feature that was done went live to national TV, which was super exciting. But I've only yeah. stored a lot. So no, fantastic. And it's, it, I mean, of course, for us who understand English, it was a shame that they cut out your English and didn't just have subtitles. So I was trying to listen to what you were saying, you know, and. I, I think I got there in the end, but um, but basically you were talking about um, how you're trying to do plastic free. Was that only in July, or basically you're trying all the time? So so basically a year ago, um, after being in Japan for about two and a half years, uh, made the decision to stop using so much plastic. It got to a point where it was just completely overwhelming. The quantity of plastic that my husband and I were using in a household of two, um, and so Plastic Free July. Which have you heard of Plastic Free July? I hadn't, but um, yeah, once I saw it in the video, of course, yeah, it's it's all over the world. People were trying to do it just for July. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's an Australian initiative, which is really oh, okay. amazing. Okay. Um, and it's kind of uh, basically the the concept is that you take a pledge for the one month during July to eliminate single-use plastics from um, your life. So you say, okay. for example, I'm not using plastic bottles, plastic cutlery or coffee cups, for example. And the idea is that, you know, after a month, people will realise, hey, this is actually quite easy. You kind of get addicted, hopefully, and go a little bit further. And that's what happened with me. So for Plastic Free July, I started. And then at last the end, year, not last this year. year for uh -huh. 2018, yeah, and I started. And then at the end of it, after trying not to use single-use plastic, I still had a huge bag of plastic for my husband and I, for our, our two-person household. And I just went, this deserves more than a month. This is going to need yeah. a lot longer. And so then I made the decision to basically document all of my plastic use for uh, each month that I went okay. through. Um, mm -hmm. And then that process has been going on. And I just finished up one year in July for Plastic Free July this year. Which Great. Was wow. So you did a whole year of it. Did a Fantastic. whole year. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and, and you know, it was a, it's, it's a daunting process because you're photographing all your rubbish for everyone to see and put it online. It's actually quite confronting to those first few times because you're kind of judging yourself a little bit, yeah. but then you're worried about how other people will judge you. But in the end, it was the best thing that I could do because I think on social media you see all of these fantastic eco influencers, yeah. which are the best type of influencers that you can get. But they all have their wonderful kind of little mason jars of rubbish, and they say this is my rubbish for five years, and oh, it's yeah. it's very difficult to live like that. Yeah. And so, especially, especially in, somewhere, in Japan, in exactly. Japan. So I wanted to really put it forward and say, you know, a process like this takes time. It, yeah. You won't get that mason jar in a month. And in a place like Japan where the conversation is still very, very kind of very early days about yeah. plastic use, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. So, yeah, Definitely. so that, that yeah. last year was huge. I'm kind of addicted to it now. I'm, I'm kind great. of like, do I keep on going or do I stop now? Oh, you got to keep going. This is what I thought. You're an inspiration to everybody. Hopefully, and hopefully. You know, I, I really found that this year there were certainly on the staff side of things, it was easier, right? Like when you take your own bag to the bakery and yeah. say, I'd really like to just go from that tray straight to my bag. Yeah. Can we do it? You know, yeah. and previous years it'd be like, no, impossible. I'm going to oh. insist on putting in a million bags. 
But recently it's been like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. You know? Interesting. Maybe that's because a lot of the kind of the staff at these venues and these establishments are a lot younger and maybe they're a little bit more in tune there's, with what's happening. There's something happening just slightly. I mean, yeah. you're, you're in Tokyo, maybe it's a, bit, a lot easier for people yeah. to to get the idea. I'm outside of Tokyo, so it just takes a little bit longer. But yeah. certainly this year, it's been positive. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear because I feel like for the last year that I've been doing it, every time I go to a new establishment and ask and take my own container or do something different, I feel like I am met with complete shock and confusion. But eventually when I explain in my very bad broken Japanese what I'm trying to do, um, they tend to be, they tend to realise and they go, oh, okay. And then don't judge me for this. But at the end of those very awkward conversations, I end up saying, eko de eko. And, and then they go, oh, oh, okay, okay. And they realise what I'm trying to do. So I think it's just a conversation and it's a process that will take some time. Yeah, but fantastic. And during, I, I, I think it'd be interesting comparison during the year, have you been back to Australia? or other yeah. countries and is it any better? Yes, completely. Japan? It is, so, okay, good. Yeah, so Australia, Australia. Um, growing up we had a culture, I, I lived on the east coast of Australia near a beach and I grew up on a beach and surfed and did surf life saving. I grew up in Hawaii. So yeah, okay. And so all the waste was, is crazy, right? Well, and the, but we almost, there's a there's an individual responsibility, like a collectivity that if you see a piece of paper or rubbish on the ground, it's not too dissimilar to Japan in that sense, that you pick it up and you put it in the bin because the immediate threat is that it will go into the ocean and kill our wildlife. And so we kind of had this, I had this growing up, um, but coming to Japan and like just the, the the triple packaging, the triple wrapping of things, like the the, the amortanashi, which is like really a wonderful part of culture here, but it's just so damaging yeah. that it's the undoing or the unlearning of that and yeah. the education process. But Australia's great. They've got fantastic bulk food stores. So oh, I don't nice. know. So zero waste shopping, you can actually totally. do it. Yeah, so there's, there's a few great companies that have kind of come on the market in the last year um, mm -hmm. One particular one is a, is the Source Bulk Foods. They have something like 52 locations around Australia that are all like basically zero waste or um, uh, bulk food stores where you take all your wow. own containers. And it's like everything from ice cream That's awesome. to rice to um, beauty care. It's not just like, you know, Biosabon here in Japan. Do you have Biosabon where you are? No. They're like an organic supermarket. Okay. But you go in there, everything's wrapped in plastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, even even here, organic shops, it doesn't matter. They yeah. still have everything in plastic. Yeah. But to Biosabon's credit, they have a small bulk section where you can buy like lentils and some, you know, chickpeas, dried okay. fruit, bits and pieces. But it's it's a start, which is fantastic. But ideally it'd be great to have that, you know, have those bulk foods in more locations around Tokyo Definitely. and Japan. Definitely. Yeah. And then it's, you know, like you, I saw in the video, you, you take your own bottle to the bubble tea shop or, you yeah. know, I mean, it's just finding certain places that are easier or the staff are more familiar with this idea, right? Yeah. Have you, yeah. It's exactly like that. We we kind of have, because um, uh, my husband and I live in Nakanoku, and we have our little kind of our zero waste Saturday morning shops that we go to. Okay, nice. And what's, what's really cool is um, our local bakery where we take our little cotton bags. Um, you know, my husband came back last week and he said, oh, they've employed a new staff member there. And that new staff member took Ash's um, tray of baked goods and started to put it in a plastic bag and three of the surrounding staff jumped on her and was like, Gulastiku, they just started straight away. And so Ash was like, they, they remember us and they're part of the community now, which is really good. So it, it gets easier, I think. That's the most important That's thing. Good, it gets yeah. easier. And yeah. and I I mean, it's it's frustrating, but I try to think every time I talk to someone, even if it doesn't go anywhere, it's a conversation. Exactly. And they might just have it in their mind for the future or they might mention it to their manager or you don't know. But 
having that conversation, just asking, is it possible? That's an important step to have, right? Completely, completely. And and like even little things like at the at my work where I work, I was showing one of our, our staff, um, our community members uh, about my Echo de Eco account. And she looked at me and she was like, oh, would you like to do a presentation at work about that? And I was like, I would love to. And so that's part of the content that you saw on Asahi yeah, saw News channel was um, because somebody showed interest and was like, oh, we can help you kind of reach to a bigger audience at work. We ended up having those weekly lunchtime sessions for the whole month right? of yeah. July. So, yes, every conversation can lead to something bigger. That's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. yeah. Because I've done some research in Kamikatsu, which is the only zero waste town in Japan. It's a yes, really, really that. small, small place in Tokushima and Shikoku Island. Mm. Mm. Um, and when I went there, they were actually, everybody takes their garbage to the central sorting station and you sort into 45 different categories. And when I told my Japanese friends that, and this is a couple of years ago, they were like, no, mendoksai, like, no, how horrible, you know? But yeah. then I think, I think now, a few years later, other towns are trying composting. Other yep. towns are trying more sorting, you know. So definitely maybe because of the G20 this year in Osaka, yes. that yep. there there was a push to reduce plastic. There is a conversation. Have you noticed, like, more around you about anti-plastic now? Yeah, totally. And and it's in Japan, it has definitely ramped up in the last year that I'm that I've been aware of what's been happening. But I think culturally there is there is a shift happening. Like you said, there are conversations, there is movement towards a new direction. Um, Japan is still like as much as I love Japan, Japan is still years behind the rest of the world. And I think you know, as part of this process, initially in the first few months that I, when I was going plastic free, um, I was getting angry, like really angry because things would get bagged. You'd have to look at look at attendance because if you turn your eye for two seconds, they double bag something. And I had to realize that you can't get angry at, at anyone because it's just part of the culture here that that relearning is happening, but it's just going to take time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but it started, which is fantastic. So I think it's good. Yeah. And uh, another thing that kind of heightened awareness for me and, and I think for other people that have joined us is we're doing monthly river and beach cleanups. Yeah. And then people who join, they just try It's just for an hour. It's once a month. And uh, people who join always say, oh, my God, it makes me think so much more about what I'm buying. And yes. I think I think that's the the conversation again, right? Like just seeing how it ends up in the river, how it ends up in the ocean, that it brings it more to the surface, what the actual problem is. Completely. And I think that's part of the process where I've encouraged a lot of my friends to start photographing their plastic and collecting it. That's a great because, idea. Um, if you, there's this assumption that, oh, I have recycled, I've washed all my contents, I've recycled it, I've put it out on a Wednesday or a Saturday, it gets collected. Most of it gets burnt. It doesn't yeah. get recycled we, now that China. Now we know. Stopped. Now we yeah. know it's not actually getting recycled, right? And it's kind of there's this blind belief that the organizations that we we elect to in put in power are yeah. are doing their best and they're fulfilling what they say they will do or what we believe that they are doing. When in fact you dig a little bit deeper, you realize that that is not what is happening at all. So I think we've gone from this point of just expecting um, our governments and our local councils to fix the problem. And for me, I kind of went, well, I can't guarantee that I know when I put this outside that the right thing is being done with it. Yeah. So it's a it's a movement shift, and I think this is happening yeah, globally, yeah. that people are putting the onus back on themselves and they're Definitely. taking the responsibility. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the process. When you see it all laid out, tables and tables of plastic, that's when you have that reality check and you go, this is absurd. This is no yeah. way to live life. So sure. I think, yeah, awareness is definitely on the rise, which is good. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody is thinking about going plastic free, do you have any like easy advice to get started or? The, the best thing that I can say is don't, don't think you have to go out and buy all of this fancy zero waste stuff to start right. the journey. You can literally start with everything that you have in ho at home in your house. 
Like you can go online and buy $40 beautiful cutlery that compacts and it's titanium and it's like you can literally just take cutlery from your own drawer. Like <laughs> like yeah. people, people are kind of getting eco-washed or zero waste washed mm-hmm. into this idea that it has to be beautiful and brand new. That's the exact opposite of what this movement is about. It's about living with less and impacting gently on the earth. So I would say start small. Um, don't try and give up everything in one go because in Japan, oh, it's just you'll you'll do it and realise how hard it is and you'll give up. So my advice is start small. Commit to drink bottles. So stop maybe using plastic water bottles as your first thing and then if you drink tea or soda, start moving on to them a few weeks later and make it a slow process where you start to eliminate things over a longer period of time. Because if you Mm -hmm. go too hard, too fast, you're going to give up. Give up, exactly. So baby steps completely. Oh, good. That's such good advice. Thank you so much. Yeah, Yeah. I think I think I totally agree. 100%. And starting with water, that makes a lot of sense. I interviewed a guy who's doing the My Mizu project. (laughs) Robin. Robin, yeah. Yes. So that's such a fantastic pro- uh, product that they're creating through the app. And it's going to be such a great service to allow people to know where they can refill all over Japan and maybe even all over the world. So yeah. even starting just with water, you know, it's summer, it's hot. How many bottles would you have to buy a day if you were exactly? And you can't carry you can't carry two liters of water around with you from the start of the day to the end of the day. Um, funnily, I just actually signed up on the My Mizu app to be a test, um, like test pilot for their app. Ah, for the beta so I did that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I will be using that over the coming weeks, which I'm really excited about. That's great. Yeah. Mm. So there is technology in our favor, for sure. And uh, there are great entrepreneurs and inspiration from you and from other people. We just have to keep looking for it. Yeah. I think it's just talking like in Japan. It's so it's so interesting that this little group that I started at, at work, which is like an eco action group, once somebody started talking about it, other people were like, oh, I've been wondering how to do that. How do you do that? And it's literally the more people that start talking, the sharing of the knowledge becomes so much easier. I think yeah. for me, I felt like I've been battling this for myself yeah. by the last for the last year. And you feel but like now, you're alone, right? Yeah, Many completely. times. And yeah. and now I've got like and and often, you know, with my not so great Japanese, in Japan, I've kind of hit brick walls to be able right. to research yeah. things. And so by having colleagues at work who are now part of this group. They are like, oh, I can research this for you. I can do this. And they're they're getting so much more further. So I think it's it's just so community based and it's so community driven. And at the end of the day, it's it's we we just need to look after ourselves. And individually, that adds up to a collective that becomes phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be in Japan at this time. Like I think there is Japan's there's a cultural shift happening, and I feel very privileged to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And your efforts and your encouragement of other people make such a big difference, especially in Tokyo. And then for this next year with, well, even this year with Rugby World Cup Mm. happening soon. And then of course, Tokyo Olympics next year, it's a great time to make these changes that'll continue into the future. So thank you so much for all your great effort and keep it up. Don't give up. No worries. Thank you for having me. And it was really lovely chatting to you. And um, yeah, and hopefully um, we get to meet in person one day. I hope so. Yeah, I sometimes come up to the big city. So I'll, I'll let you know. Please yeah. let me please let me know. And It'd be great to meet you, you in person. And if you have any links to any of the things you've written or other, like you, you were talking about posting your pictures of plastic and stuff. Yes. If you could send that to me, that'd be great. We'll do. We'll do. Okay. Definitely. All right. Well, please stay in touch and I look forward to chatting to you in the future. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.